Good to go. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the February 3rd meeting of the uh, Common Council's Planning, Land Use, and Economic Development Committee. Committee members present, um, Joyce Love, Tom Hoey, and myself, Kathy Fahey. Other council members present, Richard Conti, Awusu Anani, and I'm sure there are more who are gonna be joining us. Um, uh, staff, John, uh, council staff, John Rafael Pichardo, uh, and Michelle Andre, and planning department staff, um, Commissioner Chris Spencer, and Director of Planning, Brad Glass. Um, we all, uh, Danielle, I missed you. Uh, uh, our city clerk, Danielle Gillespie. Um, we also have council member Ginny Farrell, I see here. So uh, we do have a lot on the agenda tonight. The planning committee has been really busy. Um, so we're, we're, uh, we're gonna be discussing local law G and um, uh, uh, we're also going to be briefly discussing the franchise agreement. Jared, oh, Jared, I missed you. Jared Pellerin from Corp Council's office. Hi, Jared. Uh, Jared's going to uh, talk to us about the franchise agreement, and um, and then we'll talk about uh, Ordinance 4612220, which is the technical amendments to the USDL. So we'll start with Local Law G, and that is. Um, the local law amending chapter 42 of the Code of the City of Albany by adding a new part entitled City of Albany Commission on Municipal Internet Service and providing for the responsibilities of the commission with respect to researching the logistics and financing of a city owned high speed internet service and requiring the commission to make findings and recommendations to the mayor and the Common Council regarding creation of such infrastructure. Okay, and the um, sponsor of that legislation is Awusu Anani. So Awusu, um, we can start with you and you can tell us why you're bringing this legislation forth. Having some technical we difficulties over here, but I'm all set. Okay. Hold on, please. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so this local law G has been around since 2018. Um, it's in the recognition of uh, the need for access to internet in the city of Albany. Uh, very too often in the city, there was reports that were made that 29% uh, of our residents don't have access to the internet. Uh, the internet is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. Uh, whether you're looking to apply for a job, uh, keep up to date with the latest news, to conduct various business transactions. Um, and as an educator, uh, many of my students rely on the internet to do their homework or to take classes, uh, especially as schools are now being incorporated into the internet-based resources. Uh, that's part of their curriculum. Uh, and just more recently, we have updated uh, website, uh, city website, uh, whether you're requesting for city services, you need access to the internet. If you want to pay a tax bill, you will need access uh, to the internet. And like I mentioned earlier, um, in 2019, there was a report that was made by the Times Union that nearly 29% of Albany households don't have access to the internet. So this is a recognition of the fact that there are several of our residents, one third of our residents don't have access to the internet. And when the private sector fails to act, uh, I strongly believe that government must intervene. Uh, we already know what happens with cities uh, which have municipal internet, right? Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, they have seen lower internet costs and faster speed than areas with private internet services. Uh, they have seen increase in private sector investments. Uh, individuals are actually moving into Chattanooga, Tennessee to start up businesses, to establish small businesses, hiring 
uh, job opportunities because a reliable internet, that is what it provides job opportunities. It also encourages uh, entrepreneurs to come to your town and set a business. All that is some things that are sometimes missing in the city of Albany. But also in the city of Albany, we have Spectrum Charter, which is in my eyes, Spectrum Greed. Um, and I believe that they need competition in the city, which is going to lower the prices of the quality internet that uh, our residents have requested and demand. You know, there is no longer, and I believe that this legislation, once the committee is put together um, and we do make a decision to move forward, uh, there won't be no longer a monopoly on high-speed internet services because we will have alternatives and options. Um, so essentially the main takeaway is that uh, the internet is an essential part of everyday lives. So it's important that everyone has access to this. The most effective means of ensuring that everyone in Albany will have access to high quality internet is to establish a municipal internet services. Around the country, cities that have municipal internet have seen lower internet costs and have faster speed because of the increase in competition it brings. It also an effective way to attract new residents and businesses to our city. Setting up com this committee I'm proposing will be a positive step in the right direction of increasing internet access. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Awuso. I wanna mention that planning committee members, Judy Doshe uh, and um, Albert Alfredo. I was calling you Alberto earlier, Alfredo. Alfredo Ballerin have also joined us. Um, now, uh, I was, uh, most, many of you might, some of you might recall that a study was done uh, back in 2000, 17 by a group called Millennium Strategies uh, Broadband Assessment and Feasibility Study. And um, they had recommendations. Uh, I, I, I was just going through it today, a lot of recommendations in this report, and, and it was very helpful to me. And, uh, uh, you know, most the average person is pretty technologically challenged as far as understanding all, all of this, you know, broadband, because there's so many different categories. This report, if you have a chance to read it, it was sent out late today. Um, it's really, really helpful. Um, I don't know if you've seen it at all, Awusu. Um, actually, I did two years ago, but I also okay. find an interest. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be positive. Okay. Uh, so no, I just wish uh, that uh, people would have sent that, um, that report, you know, you know, probably a little bit earlier instead of 30 minutes before the meeting, but I did uh, read it a couple of months ago. Um, so I just wish that it would have been really nice for my colleagues to have uh, kind of gotten the report or the document, um, you know, before 30 minutes before the meeting, but that's not your there. Well, just, thank you. you're I the sponsor it. of the legislation. So, you know, you can, that's the kind of thing you can share with people. Feel free to do that. Thank you, Kevin. Um, but uh, I just want to, um, Turn it over to Chris Spencer. Chris, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, that report and uh, some of your thoughts on this issue. You are muted. Sorry about that. So no, I would agree with uh, a lot of Owasa's um, council member Anani's assessment in terms of the need for uh, better access. I mean, we the the report uh, notes that a lot of the people that don't have access note cost is uh, that's the number one driver as far as why people don't have access. It's not that it's not necessarily available. It is cost. Um, but this report was really about more of a partnership, a public-private partnership, and that was really what it was focused on. It wasn't focused on a municipally owned internet. Um, but one of the first things that it talked about was really creating a broadband working group. You know, these stakeholders that would be coming up with a community consensus on what the specifics might be uh, as an alternative to the high-speed network uh, and really making some recommendations as far as a community group. I, w I was not involved at all in this, so I don't really know whether that working group was ever created or whether they've ever done any um, background information or uh, get it, got any community input on this. Uh, another recommendation is really to review the city policies to, to determine ways to make it easier to incent private industry to build broadband within the city. So 
I guess the idea is, you know, is are there any of our regulations that are making it harder for the private sector to to deliver broadband? So that would be something that the that working group would be looking at. Um, really, and to charge that broadband working group with the, reviewing the business models, all the different technologies that are available and that are identified. So there are a lot of different ways of uh, delivering the broadband. And then finally, really to request uh, issue requests for proposals or request for interest to private sector bandwidth uh, providers to ident identify a, a sort of a partnership with that to, to look at what we can. It went, then went on in that um, study to talk about some options. And they're, they're a little bit, um, complex. I don't understand exactly all of the technology behind it, but the first option was really the fiber to home, which was using a new provider backbone. And when they looked at the cost over the entire city, it was about $44 million. Um, but again, the, there was a return on investment for whatever the, the partner would be. And that would be from collecting fees. So again, it was would not be free, but it would be a much reduced cost. And they, they figured there was a return on investment in about eight years for that, uh, that model. The second option was really using the existing backbone, um, but that again was a fiber to the home network. And that was about a $16 million cost with a return on investment in about almost three years. And then the, the third one was using more of a Wi-Fi type uh, network, sort of a, creating a grid of Wi-Fi um, capability, and that was about a nine, $9.2 million cost with a return on investment in three, three or four years. So, the, you know, there are a lot of good recommendations in there. I think, you know, that study at least should be considered a starting point for anybody who's, who's trying to take this further to, to go through that study, to look at what the recommendations are, to, to look at what other models are out there. Um, but then I think you have to get through some of the regulatory hurdles. So there may be some issues related to the Public Service Commission in terms of a city owning its own broadband. And, you know, it's kind of a, if the taxpayers are, are paying for it, but then you're providing free internet to a lot of people, is that unfair competition? So those are things that the Public Service Commission may weigh in on or, you know, again, if it's run by that. And then there may be some FC issues as well. So again, then you have to look at the capacity. How would, as a city, would we run, develop, and deliver uh, free internet or, or large or broadband? So one of the thoughts I had in general was really to, in, the, in this study, there is some recommendations, not just recommendations, but there's some surveys. The problem with the surveys is they talk about sort of raw numbers. How many people in the survey didn't have access to broadband, not necessarily because there's a gap in coverage, but how many didn't have it because of costs. And then I think, you know, if you're looking at this from a citywide perspective, you probably know where those gaps, not just in coverage are, but where are the larger gaps, at least from a mapping perspective, where people can't afford internet and start in geographic areas rather than trying to to uh, blanket the entire city. So those are kind of my sort of first first blush thoughts on this entire thing. Uh, you know, I think it's, again, there was a lot of work that went into the initial study. It was not the model that um, the council members talking about. It was not a, not a municipally owned, but it was a partnership. But I think there are probably some lessons in there and there's probably some follow-up that could happen out of this study, so. Thank you, Chris. Uh, the the um, I have it here. The working group that um, uh, uh, entertained this um, that uh, got this study going included the Albany Public Library, the Downtown and Central Avenue bids, the City School District of Albany, Green Tech Charter School, the Albany Housing Authority, um, Dan Herring, who was a council member at the time, uh, the Albany Promise the Center for Technology and Government at the University at Albany and business leaders. So that's uh, important to keep in mind who, you know, who initiated a lot of this. Um, why don't we stop now and get questions and uh, feedback comments from other council members. Tom, you're muted. Yeah, I was gonna put the unmute button, sorry. A little bit of a delay there. Um, 
we got a broadband feasibility study RFP, which is request for proposal. I don't see the recommendations. Is there another thing that I'm missing? Yes, there's a link and then there's an attachment. There's two different things. Okay, thank you. Other comments? And Tom, I just want to be, uh, if I can just say, that was uh, uh, done in 2015. So just want to- Oh, uh, 2016. 2016, thank you so much. Sure. Actually, my department was involved with that. We worked with Center for Technology and Government. I kind of remember my boss used to go to the meeting. So, um, you know, and I think they were trying to push for the Wi-Fi, but, uh, you know, that was a long time ago and technology's changed since then, so. Alfredo? Thank you. So I guess my questions have to do with the, the big, the big hurdle that that you'd have to try to overcome to to have something like this, and that's the cost. Um, and I think there are some there are more resources out there today, uh, and more outside potential uh, dollars to be able to assist with the cost than there were five years ago. And part of it because of what we've gone through the last year and the increased uh, visibility of the necessity uh, and the dependence that we are on, um, on technology and on the internet specifically. So my questions are, when you did the breakdowns of the cost, the 44,000, what, what did that get us? Because to my understanding, numbers that I've been shown of how much it would cost to wire, you know, to wire the city was higher than that. So I'm trying to get an understanding of what what do the three different stages actually provide services to our residents, and what would that be a one-time cost, or what would be the maintenance cost to try to uh, do any of the three that was already uh, reviewed. That that was uh, forty four million, right? But yes, I think million. I think that's the kind of thing that um, a task force or commission would look into. You know, kind of pick up on on some of these recommendations and possible costs. What did the last? I again, I haven't had an opportunity to look at the report, and I apologize for that. Um, but what did that get us based on the last study that we already did? Uh, what did that get us? I mean, did that was that just using the existing lines, or was that creating new lines to actually be independent from well, where we currently are? And if, you, and if no one has the answer, that's fine. I, yeah, I don't think I don't think we do, Alfredo. I think that's something we have to look at more closely. Um, if I could just um, add. Um, and I think that's, that would be a question for most of from the last uh, committee that, that put it together, but uh, let's face it, all right? Like if we put this commission together and they determine that this is something that is feasible and it's logistic, it, it will be expensive. It, 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 it's no surprise. It will be the job of the committee to examine the issue, municipal internet and how it's going to set up in Albany. There's no doubt that it will be expensive. But let's think about what valuable infrastructure isn't expensive, right? When our water system was built, it was expensive, but nonetheless, it remains a valuable asset to the city that no one wants to give up. Uh, the same could be said for our streets, our sidewalk. Internet is now a vital utility. It's a vital utility, especially in these times that we're in during this pandemic. And in the same way that our city invests in water infrastructure, it would be worthwhile to invest in city-owned internet. Does anyone have any thoughts uh, as far as reconstituting this work this work group that uh, began some of this uh, work, and uh, or any other comments people have? Kathy, I can't find the link with the report. Could some I wrote in the chat. Could somebody send me a link if they don't mind or email me? Michelle? Let's see. Um, Michelle, did you hear Tom? 
I, I might be able to send it if I can bring it up, but. Uh, was it in an email or, because I, I looked through all my emails. Oh, uh, you know what, uh, Michelle? Kathy? Actually, I don't think, it, did it go out to members, Michelle? Which one? Can you send out the, um, Chris uh, Spencer had sent out the uh, link to the broadband, uh, Attachment to the Broadband and Feasibility Study RFP. Is it the Broadband Study? Pardon? The Broadband Study? Study? I sent it out. It's. Um, Tom, it should I have come at. Out. It should have come at four oh three today, right. Tom. Yeah, I just, just emailed you what, what I got. Hmm. I just forwarded it to Tom again. So. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Chris. Did others not receive it? Just out of curiosity, we'll make sure everyone gets it. I got it in a Word document, so yeah, correct like document. Okay, I I just and I just looked at it. It's in the last reminder email. Yeah, and like, I just forwarded it also, Tom. Oh, so okay, should, thank you. You should be in here with lots of emails. Any other comments or questions about how we should proceed here? Before you go, I on, just want to answer. Sorry, just uh, your question on the forty-four million. That was again. That was the new backbone solution. So that was really about creating an entire new infrastructure. You know, and I think what it was saying is, although that's the optimum solution, it might not be necessary for another carrier to blanket the entire city again, you know, there's because there's a lot of redundancy there. So that's what the 44 million was. So thank you. Um, for that, Chris. Thank you. Are, people, is, are, are folks in favor of moving forward, of, of reestablishing the task force or um, putting out a request for applications for members to serve on a commission to uh, take the next steps and take a closer look at how, how uh, we can expand yeah. internet access. Can, can we... Um, jo Joyce. Yes, can we... Um, I think we, sh we should uh, start a commission. I think that uh, we should just go to the to the next step. Um, I don't want to move it out of committee uh, as of yet because uh, I haven't read read it all neither because I just got it today. I'm like mm -hmm. Tom, you know, um, and I like to read it a little bit more closely. So can we um, start a, ta a little task like you just said um, and uh, come back? I mean, and I, and I grant, granted, I realize this, this what Wusu is a saying, saying, it's really crucial that we all have vital internet. Um, but it's also crucial that we um, also know where the money is coming from. Okay, thanks, Joyce. Others, oh, Judy, I saw your hand earlier. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, I, I'm betwixt in between on this. Um, uh, I, I see a significant benefit to passing legislation that creates a commission as opposed to reconstituting the advisory committee or whatever that was, because here we are and we don't have guidance. We don't have a result from that. Um, and um, this is looking for something that is potentially, I wanna say more informative and actionable uh, for us then to act on. The creation of this commission tasks them with um, uh, studying and, and issuing a report with findings that include the costs and benefits associated with the logistical requirements with creating a municipal internet service uh, and consideration of how other municipalities have created their municipal internet services, um, identification, identification of all necessary or advisable city and state legislation, uh, development of an ideal model of a municipal internet service. I uh, review and, and available options that would minimize financial cost of creating such infrastructure. 
Um, it, it has two others, I'm not gonna read the rest, but I think that that is getting at some of what we are talking about here. Um, and I, I think this is a laudable goal. I think um, it's worthwhile to study this um, some more and the commission might be the appropriate place to do it. I am concerned then about the burden, and I don't think that we've discussed this, the burden of who staffs this, um, how you, you know, who is going to be drafting this report. I, there's a part of me that thinks Awusu should be the chairperson and he should be ultimately responsible for drafting the report with all of the details, which then would refer to some of these documents and some of these other things that we're now currently referring to and maybe uh, updating uh, some of that. Um, but I am concerned still then how much, how burdensome this is and how, how we essentially, we, whether it's us, the council, um, or the planning department, or, and since the planning department is here as, you know, representing a staff, where do they come up with the resources to um, assist this commission in taking on this fairly uh, weighty um, analysis? Um, and, and recommendations, et cetera. Um, so that's why I'm betwixt and between is there is, we have a lot of things going on in the city and a lot of burden. Yeah. Um, do we, do we, I wanna say in a sense, do we, the council punt on this or do we dig in further and come up with some more detailed next steps for this so that we move this forward potentially more quickly than the development of a commission. So we could create our, we could create an ad hoc committee within the council and have that committee bring in advisors, et cetera. Uh, but then I'm also concerned about, we have JR, um, uh, with a lot of other tasks that he needs to be uh, performing. We have a lot on our plate. So anyway, those are, those are my thoughts. I, I welcome further discussion. Someone else who oh. hasn't had a chance, Jenny. Uh, hi, I, I think it's been a really great discussion that um, and has happened and uh, I, I appreciate the different points that Judy just brought up. Uh, I don't know the right way forward. I think the different concerns that have been discussed and also ideas that have been presented have been really helpful. Um, I just, I kind of wanted to speak because I think the pandemic has highlighted how much of an issue this is. And my, um, as people know, I work with the Albany Fund for Education. I serve on that board. And one of the things that we've been doing is giving, uh, getting computers to kids that don't have computers. And so it's, it's a bigger issue than you can possibly imagine. Um, so I, what I, I would say, I'm happy to help in any way. Um, but I also would keep in mind that whatever the solution is to get broadband or internet access, whatever it is, to our residents. Um, I think that that should be the ultimate goal and however we can do that in the most efficient, best manner possible should, should be the, the way that we move forward. So if it's municipal broadband, fantastic. It's, um, I know the library, I think that they just um, started doing Wi-Fi in their parking lots. So it, it's possible that partnerships are um, a good way forward. But I just, I wanted to speak because I have become aware of the urgency at a much higher level um, with my involvement with AFE. And I, um, so I appreciate the conversation. I'm happy to help. And I 
um, hopefully we'll be able to do something to move the whole thing forward. Uh, Tom, I see your hand again. Yeah, I had a chance to go over the um, the link. Thank you, Chris. That that really useful. Um, we got to act on this. Obviously, will we be able to get something like this? Um, you know, for the semester. You know, this is the start of the third uh, semester for the school district. Um, probably not. But moving forward, we really got to do something. Um, now, I don't know, I know Jared's here, he's gonna be talking about the franchise agreement. I know Time Warner now, or Spectrum, has is offering a 40 meg, um, like discounted uh, service for, especially for school age children. And it was like 20 or $30 a month. It, it, it was halfway affordable. But I think putting pressure on them by forming a commission or whatever we're gonna do, I think will be useful. And you know, backing up what uh, what Ginny said, we should involve the school district and the library in discussions that you know, whether it's a commission or whatever we decide to move forward with. But this report looks excellent from what I'm looking at. Of course, the the numbers are going to change the the cost of equipment, and uh, but it looks like they got most of the, the technology down. So I don't think we'll have to do another study. I think this study would work. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'd i like to move forward, you know, as soon as possible. So that, that's my opinion. I agree, but um, I like Judy's idea of um, an ad hoc committee just to kind of get this jump started. And that is not to say we're not gonna do the commission at all, but I think like as Tom, you mentioned, to get that input for, from uh, some of the other players here um i think would be really helpful to, to and like joyce said a lot of us haven't had a chance to really review this document um alfredo hi and, and thank you um i think uh i think we need to move on this now uh, and the reason i say that is uh you know the pandemic has shown how necess how important the internet is, as well as how unfairly distributed and how some people are being held back by not having this resource, this utility. 100 years ago, lights was a luxury. Heat was a luxury. You know, to be able to turn that term instead on 100 years ago was a luxury. Today, there are programs to make sure that people don't go, don't go without heat during the winter. There's no program right now to make sure people don't go without internet. So I think now is the time to act. I think now is the time where there's going to be funding available from outside sources from potentially the federal government, potentially from private sources that are out there that we want to be able to tap into where two years from now, it might not be there. You know, we may have a different focus. Um, so I, I think we need to act now. Uh, I'm not sure what's the fastest way to act. I do want it to be a, a group of people that are gonna be fair and unbalanced and balance, not unbalanced, fair and balanced and, and, and say it how it is, show the truth to it, the true cost to it, and be very open with uh, and transparent uh, with all of it, because I, I do think it's gonna have a hefty fee, uh, but if we can find resources from outside, um, outside the city, and, and the key is to make it so that everybody has access to it. Just like everybody has access to heat and light, everyone needs to have access to internet. It is not a luxury. Okay, thank you, Alfredo. I think we all agree with you. Richard? Uh, thanks. So there's, there's no disagreement here in terms of the importance of the issue and the need to move forward. Um, there seems to be like three uh, points of uh, 
I don't know, we'll call entry into the issue, you might say. There's the immediate, intermediate, and the longer term. The immediate issue uh, is dealing with the franchise agreement, which is before us. The current franchise agreement is actually expired. Uh, and so there are ongoing discussions now regarding uh, extension or renewal or whatever regarding the franchise agreement. So that's an immediate issue before us uh, in terms of one way in, as far as uh, getting at the issue. I mean, the issue is making, uh, expanding and making uh, broadband availability uh, across the board. The, the other point, the next point, intermediate area is this millennium study and the recommendations uh, to what extent that they were followed up on and to what extent do they provide options as far as uh, expansion and moving forward. That's a report that's been done that's out there that can be used. Longer term is the idea of examining the possibility of a uh, municipally owned uh, internet or broadband system. So uh, you have an immediate need to expand uh, the availability of broadband. Uh, and what's on the table right now, we have the franchise agreement uh, issue that that's under negotiation now. That's one point of accessing that. You have this Millennium Report, uh, which provides a lot of information, recommendations, and data. It's an opportunity to how do, how do we use that report uh, also to build on something. And the longer term, moving forward, taking a serious look at the, uh, the feasibility of uh, developing a, uh, a city-owned system. The city-owned system is not going to address the, the immediate need that we have right now. So let's look at what, how can we get to the immediate need while also on the horizon looking at, you know, down the road, uh, what is the longer term solution that we want? Um, so that, those are my thoughts. Um, you can also uh, reconfigure the commission to expand its charge to include some of the immediate issues. I don't think the franchise agreement is separate that you can't put the franchise agreement in there, uh, but to look at uh, not just the issue of uh, a city owned system, but also look at some of the issues, the opportunities that may have come out of the Millennium Report. Um, you, I, I think you do need to house this commission someplace as we do other commissions, because right now it's just standing out there. Um, and I hate to say, you know, maybe the planning department is the most logical place to put it, uh, but you do need to have a uh, place it somewhere and establish some staffing uh, for it as well. Um, because right now it's just hanging out there as a commission without any home, without any staff, without any resources basically to uh, to carry out its mission. And it's just like throwing 10 people together in a room and saying- Richard, okay, how do you see the franchise agreement as address, possibly addressing the more immediate need? I think when we get, you know, when we can get into some discussions as to what uh, some of the current uh, areas that we're looking at, because we did retain uh, a third party to work with us on that. Um, but we can uh, you know, uh, include elements in our franchise agreement to the extent we have the leverage uh, to expand access and availability, uh, including affordability if that's an issue. Uh, but I think you know, Jared can probably uh, review more in terms of where we are right now with those discussions and some of the options. Okay, but we'll get to Jared and- I mean, you know, all, I, I see a, a number of ways we need to address this. Uh, the more immediate and then the longer term, which I think is what Awusu is proposing. Yeah, I, uh, Awusu, I know you want to comment. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I want to agree with what Richard is saying, that um, again, we, we, we should focus on what we could do immediately, but we should also focus on this commission as it relates to having a municipal-owned internet. Um, there were some people that I spoke to that was part of um, the previous study, uh, Scott from uh, the Albany Public Library. Um, and he has told me um, that the group or even that didn't go far enough um, and that he supports this lo lo local law, uh, uh, this commission to be put together. And uh, last time he spoke at the meeting, um, I couldn't get him here today, uh, but he strongly believes that this is a step in the right direction. Um, and, you know, Kathy, you said that there might be some people that might be interested when you look at the membership terms uh, and also vacancies, uh, section 42-383 of local law, uh, the county council could appoint 
uh, five people and then the mayor could appoint five people. So some of the people that were part of the previous commission, maybe they might be interested in being part of this commission. Uh, but like um, Chris Spencer said, this is essentially compare apples and oranges because this, my local law is to focus on city owned and operated municipal internet where the study that was done before was looking at more of a partnership between uh, the city and a private sector. So in my you know, opinion, I, I believe that we could do both where we could pass this uh, uh, local law and try to put the commission together. I know Scott has already shown interest already and will be more than happy to chair um, a uh, local law G commission that we put together. There are other people that I've spoken to that would be more than happy uh, to be part of uh, this commission. Um, so, you know, I, I speak to the administration about this issue and they, they're like, they're okay with the with putting a commission together to do this. Uh, we just got to find people that will be interested. And I'll tell you this, I already spoken to Scott. I've spoken to several members of our community uh, that would be part of this commission because people are starting to see the internet is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. And while we could focus on the short-term goal, we could also focus on the long-term goal as it relates to making access to the internet affordable, reliable, um, and city-owned. Uh, I, I, I don't think anyone is uh, not in favor of the commission. It's just, are we ready to make, I mean, people are bringing up some concerns about where the commission will be housed, uh, who, you know, what kind of staffing, where, you know, funding, and if there's funding needed, so I, I, uh, I'm thinking that it may be helpful to kind of pursue some of those answers, come up with some answers for some of those questions before we um, officially form the commission, you know, to take, just take a little bit more time, uh, maybe a couple of, a few council members to work on this. I, again, Elf, uh, other thoughts on this? Alfredo? I think for, I think it's a big problem and any big problem, it's, it's, you're looking at immediate long-term and, and I respect that. I think immediately, if we really want to address this problem immediately, we would be trying to find a either federal funding or state funding to create some type of voucher program to help people pay for the internet, just like they have to pay for heat and electricity. Um, and we have a voucher program for that. It's a state fund, funded program, so why, not look to try to have some type of voucher program for the immediate uh, today uh, try to get people the services they need. Um, when it comes to, I, I kind of feel like we have to move on this. Um, I, I, just, I just feel like if it's, I feel like the, the iron is hot now. It's like if you owned AMC or GameStack last week, you know, if you held a week, you're probably really disappointed. If you sold a week before that, you're probably really disappointed. But the iron was hat last week. And if you sold last week, if you acted last week, you probably did pretty well. I feel like right now the iron is hat on this specific issue. And I think there are resources out there for us to be able to tap into. And I don't want us to miss out on those resources because you know, we, 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 we couldn't figure out a means to go. I'm okay whether it's a commission, whether it's an ad hoc committee, okay. whether it's a task force. I just would like for us to start getting people together, working on this, building all, all the information that's already out there and then creating different paths to get people the services. It doesn't have to I mean, I know this is one part of Uzu saying he wants to move forward with, and I respect that. I'm not, I'm not saying that's not a, a potential path, but what other paths could we also create to get people the services that they need? For me, okay. it's more about people having the services that they need to be able to log on and be able to use the internet um, to live. All right, thank you, Awusu. Thank you, Alfredo. <laughs> okay, I want to just get a, a, you know, like a little straw poll from committee members. Uh, who who would be in favor of moving ahead uh, in the most uh, most immediately, either with the uh, an ad hoc committee 
of a few council members uh, to kind of pursue this a little bit more um, and answer some of these questions about how, where this uh, commission uh, would be housed and, and you know, maybe we can do it with the, uh, the help of the administration or uh, who would want to move forward, you know, jump into the commission. Uh, so straw poll, who would, who would prefer going forward with more of an ad hoc committee and taking just a little bit more time? We know that there's this immediate need. Raise your hand if you do. Okay. So that's three. And, uh, uh, and others who want to go forward immediately with the commission would be Tom and Alfredo. All right. Um, so that's, so uh, I think we're going to look at a, an ad hoc committee and who would be like, who would be part of that? Uh, so I assume you would. Yeah, but uh, we just took a vote and it seemed like it was both. Like, I think that the committee members want both. I, I don't know if I saw that. It seemed like three they to, want three both. Three to two. Three to two. Wait, say it again? We have five members on the committee. Joyce, Judy, myself thinks we'll, we'll do the ad hoc. My question is, what's the uh, opposition to just doing both, where we could do the ad hoc and just also pass this commission, like at the same time, simultaneously, like Alfredo said, when the iron is hot, you know, where we could do both. We could put the ad hoc to make, to committee together, and also we can move this, because when this passed, we could put a- I think, I know, I, I understand the urgency, but I think uh, you know a few of us want to get a few more uh, questions answered before we jump into this. Judy, what I'm saying is that oh, I'm afraid I got his hands up. All right, Judy, yeah, you are I'm, muted. I, I, right, I, I I pressed the wrong button. Okay, so my thought is either we do an ad hoc committee to dig into this, and that ad hoc committee would then be housed within the Common Council to immediately get working on studying this issue and coming up with the right solution. And that ad hoc committee could bring in experts um, from outside that committee to work with them in the same way that you know we've had other ad hoc committees study a particular issue work with, with experts. Um, so my goal would not be to do an ad hoc committee to then delay implementation of a commission. It would be instead of a commission and to essentially have us get right to it without there being these other additional steps waiting for us to do RFPs and waiting for us to, you know, interview people and people and having the mayor do the same. And, and, and just that process would, you know, usually we do, you know, a, a three week notice minimally for yeah, you know, yeah. for applications and, and the mayor and then, you know, and, and then, then you get to the point where, okay, so now we're going to, um, you know, appoint the group and then the group starts figuring out how it's going to study this issue and who they're going to rely on. Because I would assume we're not going, you know, people on a commission need to be residents of the city. I would imagine in some cases, you might want to bring in people from outside, uh, you know, to rely on that might have more knowledge and more of an idea of you know, how to proceed with this. So, I, you know, I, I, the reason why, when you, so when you ask the question, I just want to clarify, that's what my vote is for when it, when I say ad hoc. Mm -hmm. is, um, and I, you know, and I do think that it's worthwhile to, uh, for all of us to be reading this, you know, this report. I don't also, Wusu was phrasing it as his is to let's establish a municipal internet um, broadband, which may be, and I, you know, I really like the idea of that, but that may not be really the best way to get at the whole issue the quickest because 
wow. I mean, then you got to figure out, you know, a financing for that. Um, and, and you're saying you're essentially locked in to that as the way forward when the ultimate goal is get essentially everybody having access to the internet throughout our city one way or the other. Okay, does anyone want to put a motion forth here? I, I, and I just wanna say, Judy, I am more comfortable with that as well because I do know what's entailed in uh, putting together a commission. And there is an immediacy here. Kathy, I'm just concerned with like the immediacy, we can do that too while focusing on trying to put the commission together. That's why, you know, it's just like the violence that we're witnessing in our city. There's a uh, immediate plan to address it. And there's a long-term uh, goal as it relates to eradicating uh, the violence that we're witnessing in our city. So I don't think it's either or, I think it could be uh, both, you know, it's a, it's my opinion. Any other thoughts, Tom? Yeah, uh, I just calculated. I've been working with computers and telecommunications for 47 years. Um, you know, I don't want to say I'm a super, like a sur super surgeon, but I know a lot. I just went through this report. I mean, all the groundwork has been done. I mean, all the commission would have to do is to look at who the partners would be, um, you know, would we work with the university, which I'm sure would be open, the libraries, the school district? Um, all we're doing is talking about, do we move forward with a municipal broadband? And, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, if Owusu has talked to the mayor's office, you know, and we're talking about housing it, you know, why couldn't it be housed corporation council, somebody from their house and stuff, you know, well, those are some of the, I think those are some of the questions, the outstanding questions here. Yeah, but, you know, I see the value of, of moving forward because it gives us an, a one up on Spectrum, that Spectrum sees that we're starting to do something, and even Verizon, because they don't want to give us Fios, they start seeing we're going to do something, they're going to see this competition, and maybe they'll jump in, and maybe we won't do the municipal broadband, maybe the cost will be, you know, but I think just sitting here and waiting, and you know, like several people have talked about the iron's hot right now. This is important. This is important for our citizens to see that we're acting to try to help them out. I mean, you know, my, my son is doing virtual school. Thank God I have the money to pay for the broadband access. But there's kids that he knows, they can't do it. They gotta go to McDonald's and sit in the parking lot and do their homework. So I mean, Tom, who's, who's gonna staff it at this point if we pass it? Well, we, we know the, the live, there's five from the council and five from uh, the mayor's office. Uh, I'll be glad to serve on, on this type of, you know, commission. Um, I know we can get people from the university. I know we can probably get somebody from the school district. I mean, I think, you know, for doing five and we can probably even help the mayor's office identify five people, but you know, if there's something- No, I guess I'm talking about administrative type issues well uh, you know staff, me, that kind of stuff we're losing michelle so can't i don't know that it can come from the council oh i didn't know we're losing michelle okay yes um you know maybe you know i'll, I'll throw it back at, at councilman nani do you know what do you think as far as having you know support staff for the commission i think we can do it but yeah, I think I think we could do it too. Um, it could be support staff and also to have uh, planning involved. Um, I think there was a section where um, I put it where the, any information that they are requesting, uh, all the departments will uh, make available to this commission. I've spoken to Scott, who's the executive director of the library. This is something that I have to give him credit. He has been so passionate about this for years. And the other day, he almost looked like he was about to cry the lack of inaction that has taken us on this local law G. And I spoke to him 
And he thinks that this is a time now. Uh, we need to pass this and we, we can figure out with the planning, uh, the planning board um, and also the style staff um, and also all the people that want to be involved. Uh, but people are starting to see the need for, for the city to act on this issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real fast, you know, we've mentioned planning like three or four times at least, and we have Chris right here. I was just curious, what does he think or, you know, from, not from, maybe not even officially, but is this something that we should, I'd, I'd love to know his opinion. That's Okay, Chris. Yeah, I mean, in reality right now, we're, we're stretched pretty thin in terms of our capacity. Um, I think we can definitely pl pay, play a support role in terms of, helping provide data and get, get information like that. But to, you know, cause we're already running HRC planning board and zoning board and sustainability. We're, you know, we're kind of housing all, all four of those. So I don't know that we have the capacity to like put out agendas and do all of that and do all of the background coordination and meeting notices and stuff like that. But, you know, we're certainly are there to help provide information. Um, once we have a GIS, uh, consultant on board, we might be able to help with some of the mapping, but I don't know that we could take a lead on one at this point. Yeah, and I will say, and that's that's sufficient enough for this commission. Uh, Scott, who's the executive director of the library, um, he said he is 100% committed into this uh, endeavor. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I definitely see him, there's other, you know, we have Albany High graduates who graduate from Harvard, who's at Harvard, who's also interested in uh, being on this commission and doing the research. I mean, right now, uh, because of the pandemic, no one is actually meeting in person. So most of this is going to be done online or it's going to be done in their homes. Uh, so most of the meetings will be through Zoom. So when you say like staffing it, it won't be um, you know, like a traditional uh, commission where people come together in an office to uh, figure out the results or research the commission. So, I wondered if um, Albany Community Development Agency is a place to to look. Judy. So, with regard to what Councilmember Anani just said, um, having participated, staffed many councils and commissions. Um, and having participated in organizations that didn't have staff, I'm very confused as to how we get an actionable work product uh, that, uh, that the council feels comfortable moving forward on if there is not some sort of report issued and some sort of, if we're gonna go with a municipal um, internet service. It requires uh, somebody to um, draft the legislation and make sure that it meets all the requirements. And, um, you know, I, I imagine the PSC will have some role in oversight if we have some sort of municipal internet service. So there's, there's a couple items that would be required that need to come out of a commission if we're not gonna get a report and we're not gonna get legislation, then I don't know why we would be creating a commission. Um, Judy, so in, in part nine, uh, 39 um, of this legislation, of this local law, part 39, section 42-384, uh, the first line it says that the commission shall submit, submit a preliminary report to the common council and the mayor uh, regarding this report. So I'm not sure be able to see that. Um, that section that talks about the powers and duties of this commission. Uh, but that's one of the uh, goals of this commission is to. Uh, but my point is, if you're not going to have staff and you just said you don't essentially need staff in the traditional sense, who's writing that report? Where's where is the draft legislation going to come from? So you just said something in your comments just before this that's inconsistent with what my understanding was. And, and I, you know, I don't think that we can dismiss this whole idea 
of staffing. Now listen. I would draft the legislation. I've done that before. I've drafted most of my legislation. Um, okay. And also, I think um, the commission- I, 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 I'd like to suggest that we table this for today and that Awusu, you and myself and, and anyone else who's interested have some more conversations about this and uh, try to answer some of these questions that are coming up about staffing and so on. Yeah, I'd like to take um, a vote on this. Like, so I'd like I'm to move. move I'd like to move on to. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, can I say something? I've had my I'm hand up very respectfully. Council members, I want to thank you guys, but I will move in this out of committee. Um, so I just want to give you a heads up. Thank you very much. Can I? Can I say something? Alfredo, I, I, I've been very respectful. I've had my hand up several times. Go ahead, Alfredo. I'm sorry I, I missed think, you. I think we need to act on this today, one okay. day, you know another. Either way, but we, I feel like, you know, we, we, we have a lot of the information together and if we're gonna move this forward, then I say we take it on. With the limited staff that we have, we also have access to corporate counsel because they're part of our council, whether they like it or not, they're, they're part of our team, um, you know, and we take it on. I, I don't wanna see this get stalled, you know, and not get moved forward. I do respect that, Alfredo. Do you, can you want to put a motion on the table? I mean, if we put a motion, I'll put a motion to pass this as a commission where the council and corporate council heads, heads it. And where the sure well, I'll let them pick their own chair. I'll let them pick their own chair, but I'll move that forward so that it, it's, we know who's accountable. We are accountable, corporate council is accountable. And, you know, let's move this forward. Okay, a second, to, all right, second by Tom. Discussion? Judy? Yeah. Um. My, um, my gut is that this is potentially uh, fraught with problems. I just want to um, say that I am, um, I think whoever's, I mean, we have some people who have indicated that they're willing to serve on this. Um, I um, think that rather than allocating specific staff, I think since people have advocated for moving this forward as is without that being resolved, then I think it should be understood that the members of that commission need to deal with putting, um, you know, putting together the report directly rather than our limited staff, expecting our limited staff to spend essentially all their time um, providing uh, resources and reports and uh, drafting this report, et cetera. So um, uh, I, I, th I think that that should be understood and I will be voting in favor of that with that understanding. If somebody wants to tell me that I am wrong with my understanding that essentially the commission, whoever serves on that commission, not our staff, uh, not anybody in the administration because we haven't had those discussions uh, and because everybody is you know, fairly well taxed. Let's take this on, let's move it forward. Let's have a commission who bears that burden of um, producing uh, the report themselves uh, with limited reliance on staff. Um, and so with that, I, you know, th those are my comments. Well, it's, it sounds like, I mean, what Alfredo was saying is he's, he's saying Corporation Council would be the place where this commission would be housed as part of his motion. And Tom, you seconded that. Judy, it sounds like you're saying that you don't agree with that, unless Alfredo, you're, you have other thoughts. I think it should be a partnership. And the reason I think it should be a partnership is because I don't want this to get stalled. I think, like Tom said, half the work's already been done. So really what we're looking to do 
is update whatever's already been done, look at all the resources, look at all the, the information that's been, all the reports have been brought in in the last five, six years, and then look for resources that are out there now. And I guess that's my biggest fear that if we, if we keep waiting to move on this, and like I said, I don't care if it's commission and ad hoc, I don't care what we name it. I just, I just think we need to do something to put this information together now and have an action plan now rather than when the, those resources aren't there. Alfredo, we all want that, but I want to know specifically there's, there's, what the motion is. There's a motion on the, the floor. Motion, the motion, I did put the motion on the floor. Yeah, let's vote. The motion on the floor. Okay. And then you said you don't care whether it's ad hoc or what. So that's a, that's well, so I mean, conflicting. I don't, I mean, we're going to get floor. this more people support. So I, I, I'm putting it on the floor so that it, it's on. And you, and you said that it should be housed in Corp Council's office as part of the motion. It should be a partnership between corporate council and us so that we both have equal equal responsibility so that one can't be like we have too much going on we can't move this forward you know we have you know okay have equal equal so it gets moved forward okay judy another comment i know we want to okay forward. so if it is contingent upon uh with that clarification i want to know we don't have the authority to tell the administration who's going to staff what. That's not within our authority. There is an executive branch and they make the determinations as to who is going to staff it. So we don't have that information. So if that is part and parcel of your motion, I will not be supporting it. All right. Listen. Okay, then, Judy. So then, give me a way that we can make this move forward. No, no. But first off, Corp Council. Awusu, uh, Awusu. No. A, this is the committee. A, give me a way, Judy, of how we can move this forward. So we're not talking about getting the group together to talk about getting the group together. That you know, that's I don't want that. I mean, let's. There's there's, there's real pain out there, and we all know it. You know, there's kids doing their their schoolwork on their cell phones. So we all know it. So, so I'd, like, I'd like to speak. Me. I'm a little bit, I'm getting a little frustrated with people talking to everybody else on the council, including me, as though I don't understand the urgency of this. And I had suggested an ad hoc group within the common council so that we don't delay it by having to do calls for applications uh, just to get the commission together which is like, you know, a month wasted or whatever. But, um, and, but there's also this issue of, you know, how, you know, how is this report gonna get done in light of the fact that Mr. Spencer is saying, and I fully understand it, his staff is pretty maxed out at this point. Um, so we can't now just decide, oh, because Mr. Spencer is here and he says his staff can't do it, Staff that is not here that cannot address it, Marissa Franchini is is not here to address that. Oh, we're going to we are going to assign it to her. So, Alfredo, you want to move this forward? You want my vote? You move it forward without there being any staff assigned to it by us because we do not have that authority. So take that out of your motion, and I will vote for it with the understanding that the commission itself may need to dig in and do the work. And I wanna remind you that I just spent 50 hours over the last two weeks doing stuff that otherwise ideally would have been done by staff, but there wasn't staff to do it. And I oh. just wanna I just want to say too, uh, that people who are selected for a commission, uh, you know, this idea of them doing all the work, I can guarantee you that they are going to feel like, the, you know, the city that they pay their taxes to would provide some support staff. Uh, you know, it's, it is very difficult to imagine a commission um, that is run, you know, that is organized by the city uh, without any support staff. So I think the whole, that whole idea is, uh, I don't think it is workable. It's, you know, there are people who will put the, that kind of work in, but I, 
I uh, don't think you're going to select a commission, find a commission who's willing to do that. They will expect the city to provide that kind of staffing. And I agree with Judy that, uh, you know, you can't throw in a department here without having any kind of conversation with them about it whatsoever. So um, I'd like to suggest that e either we uh, form a, a small ad hoc group to kind of pursue this, some of these questions uh, today, or, or we, um, I will be voting against it, the motion that's on the table. Why don't we just bring it to the full council? It's two and two. We just take the vote on the motion. Alfredo. Uh, first and foremost, Judy, you know I have a lot of respect for you. And I I think you're a huge asset. Okay, so so my question was very real and honest. If you have a, a way, guide us, because you you do that very well. And that's a compliment to you. So, you know, I just want to make sure I put that on the table because, you know, I know that I went through this and I didn't find half the stuff that you found. So I, uh, I, I know that's a, something that we value and we appreciate. So, you know, there's no, there, was, there, there wasn't a, a, an attack there. And I just want to make sure I put that Put that up front. Um, I'm okay with removing the staff positions. I'm okay with saying it, it falls on on the commission. I just don't want to be in a situation where, you know, we're having a conversation about having a conversation. I just want us to have a conversation about doing the work and getting the information. So I amend the motion to just putting it on the commission the commission will have to do the work themselves. Okay, well, to, uh, unless there's anybody else who want to, does anyone else want to comment on this? Okay, um, all in favor? Kathy, I, yes. think he, I think he revised his motion and I think he needs a second to his revised motion. Oh, thank you, Judy. Uh, second to um, Alfredo's motion. Second. All right. Um, all in favor? <laughs> all against? Joyce, are you voting? Against? Who's? You're mute, love. With all the talk back and forth, <laughs> this was a lot to take in. So yes. I agree with Judy. I agree with Awusu. I agree with you. Listen, um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be voting because uh, I'm a little, I like to study this a little bit more. Okay, thank you, Joyce. Um, uh, it's, it looks like the motion passes. It's voted out of committee. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. All right, I thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. And uh, now we'll, uh, we're going to. Talk to Jared about the franchise agreement, Jared. If Jared's still here. I am here and it's nice. Yay, Jared, can you give us an update on the um, franchise agreement? Sure can. So good evening, everyone. And thank you for having me come on tonight to discuss the cable franchise agreement a little bit. And I can try to bring you all up to speed. Um, I'm not sure of where everyone's awareness is. So I'm just gonna do a general overview for you all. Um, and then I'm happy to try to answer some questions from there. So as it stands now, back probably when Marisa, my boss, Marisa Franchini took over from the previous corporation council, Bill Kelly, he had reached out to Charter Spectrum and asked them to begin the process of renewal, knowing that our cable franchise for the city of Albany was going to expire in November of this past year, November, 2020. And so after months, Charter came back to him with a proposed renewal agreement um, that kind of sat tabled as things caught up with 
him transitioning to city court judge and then Marisa taking over. And in the early months of the pandemic back in, I would say March, um, March and April, Marisa had approached me to start getting the ball rolling again on the cable franchise agreement and, and knowing that again, we had this November deadline. So I reached out to the PSC, the public service commission and said, wrote them a letter and, and kind of filled them in on what was going on with the city that we had had a transition in leadership and we were going to ask them to provide us with what's known as a temporary operating authority. So essentially we requested from the PSC this TOA as it's referred to and that what essentially that would do is give us in definite and an indefinite deadline to come to conclusions with this cable franchise. As long as we are moving forward in good faith, that deadline of the expiration date of November, 2020 kind of became arbitrary and no longer um, mattered. So that was good for the city and, and for us because um, it opened up, a, in a, I guess an endless timeline, so to speak. But within that time, we also, reached out to a law firm. I had done some research. I had contacted other municipalities across New York State, Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, you know, the larger cities of um, similar populations and wanted to discuss with their folks about their experiences in negotiating a cable franchise. And they gave me the recommendation to reach out to a firm in DC called Best Best in Krieger. And I know I, before this meeting, I had shared with Michelle a PowerPoint as well as a breakdown of the cable franchise that we currently have alongside um, what has been proposed by Charter Spectrum. And that came to us from these individuals at Best Best in Krieger. Jerry Letterer is a nation leader in municipal cable franchise agreements. He negotiates them across the country and works with Spectrum often, which is a reason why we engaged with him. Um, he's responsible for negotiating big, large cities from New York City, Boston, Philadelphia, here on the East Coast. He's done things out on the West Coast as well. Um, two smaller municipalities in New York, you know, Westchester, rye um there's just a number too many to, to list but he has great experience so we reached out to jerry and we said we're a little we feel we're like we're a little bit behind the eight ball here with this cable franchise renewal what do you suggest we we do and he really kind of talked us off the ledge so to speak which was nice and letting us know that we're really not up against some major time crunch or this has to be done overnight it is imperative that the city takes time and really tries to vet the agreement. And so um, we are sitting with a 15 year old agreement that was entered into you know, 15 years ago. And we know now that cable is not as, cable services are not as attractive to consumers as they once were. So as I'm sure most of you probably have in your house now, you're utilizing Netflix, Hulu, um, any of these streaming services. And so more and more of probably the city's population is moving away from choosing to purchase a, a charter spectrum package for their cable TV. Uh, maybe not entirely, I know, you know, but that's just the way that the world is moving. And so as it currently stands, there's some things within our cable franchise agreement that are more in favor and in line with the city's benefit than if we were to move forward because one of the the major things that we look at is the franchise fee so um, this is all regulated by federal law and the franchise fee is paid to the city by the cable operator in this um, instance spectrum and it is compensation for using the public property, the right of way that the city provides for them to run their cable through the city. And we get a 5% fan franchise free fee, excuse me, from the subscriptions of city residents. And 
within this time period, not only has there been a transition away from cable to um, streaming services, but there has also been a change in the federal law where the FCC has since ruled that services in kind by cable franchises can be reduced from the 5% franchise free fee. So right now in our current contract, we not only get the 5% franchise fee, but we also have negotiated a number of different services in kind as they would be considered, whether that's services to public buildings, to local schools, um, peg access, et cetera. So now the, the federal government has said, if, if a cable franchise offers these things to you, they can reduce the fee, the amount of fee that they have to pay to you as a municipality. Um, so we're seeing right now, I guess the short of it all is that we're in a bit of a holding pattern because we came to this in, in COVID. There hasn't been a massive push to move forward because once we realized that some of the way that our contract reads is more favorable and we can sit on that for right now and continue to get that benefit without changing the language to our contract, it's a good thing at the moment. But we have gone ahead and created an advisory working group. And there are a number of council members on that advisory group. Uh, council member Conti, we also have count, council member Ballerin and council member Anane, all representing the, the council on that advisory group. We also have members of the public utility project. Um, we have Scott J.R. Zombeck, the library president. We have Shakita De Abreu from the Albany Housing Authority. And there's an, a number of other individuals that are all representative of the community to make sure that as we move this process forward, we are getting a well-rounded voice at the table and making sure that we um, have discussion. So back in September, we did have an initial meeting and I want to apologize to Council Member Conti at this time too, because he was supposed to be at the meeting and I think we failed to put him on the email chain, but um, we did have an initial meeting. I know Council Member Anane was there. I'm not sure if Alfredo was, and I, I apologize if you were, but um, we did have an initial meeting where they kind of just ran through for the working group what is a cable franchise? Our attorneys did, uh, the outside counsel that we're utilizing. What is a cable franchise? What can you ask for? What can't you ask for? And how does this process move forward? So in short, again, they, they really put us, we're in the driver's seat. We can move this as fast or as slow as we want to. Some cities take upwards of five to 10 years even oh. to re-enter into wow. a contract. Um, it's not uncommon. You can also push Charter and Spectrum to move at a much quicker pace and you want to get this shored up and you'd like to enter into a new contract. So those are all considerations that we will have to, to make. And I know the mayor has addressed the desire to put a focus on this. Um, she also understands that we are in a position that kind of leaves us better off right now at the moment than if we seek this renewed contract where we would lose some things, but maybe we can negotiate for other things um, that, that have yet to be seen. So there is a tension to it, um, but as fast as we want to move is still a question that we have to kind of um, get an answer to. So I know I bounced around a little bit, but I, I hope that that kind of gives you a general idea of where we are and what we're looking at. Um, and I'm happy to try to answer any questions you may have. I will say that as this process goes forward, um, we have discussed with our outside council the prospect of having them address all of you as well, um, because they are much more knowledgeable than I am, seeing as that's kind of the practice area of law that they specify in. But um, as we get further down the line, that may be an option as well. Thank you, Jared. Uh, questions or comments? Uh, Tom Hoey. Yeah, Jared, um, one of the things I heard some years ago, and actually Mayor Jennings was still in office, is that Verizon didn't want to bring the Fios in 
because they couldn't do the TV portion, which back then was more important than it is, as you mentioned today. Is that true? Can we have more than one provider provide, you know, the cable TV channels? Yes. So you can offer a franchise to more than one provider. And that is, again, both regulated by federal and state law. And they have to basically operate on the same. So what what deal or contract you enter into with one, the other one has to be of similar parameters. But that is something that we recognize, too. And I think we're working with the working group. A question will be asked of is how do we get more providers to the table? How do we entice them to want to provide their services within the city of Albany? And, um, and I'm a hopeful that maybe our outside council has had some experience in that. That isn't something that we've flushed out too much yet. As I said, we just had a basic meeting back in September, but we do recognize that. The internet, as we've been talking about tonight, is also, I'm sure, something you're all interested in learning about. And, the problem with internet under a cable franchise agreement is you can't regulate cable or you, excuse me, you can't regulate things like broadband and internet under the agreement. You also telephone services that's outside the scope of this. And we can't deny a cable franchise agreement if they don't want to provide us with specific internet services to our municipality. That is something that's been litigated However, it is still something that we can discuss and negotiate with them and hopefully find a way or a leverage to get them to want to bring that internet to us. But again, we can't deny them a cable franchise agreement because they ultimately don't end up providing us with the internet. Thank you. Any Certainly. other, uh, Alfredo? Alfredo. Thank you. Um, yeah, but I left that meeting in September very deflated, um, you know, with the information that was shared. Um, has any of the policies changed or has there been talk of any policy changes since we've had a new administration at the federal level? Can I just make one comment before you go further, uh, just noting that this is a public meeting and I just want to make sure that nothing we say or, or questions or whatever might get into the issue of our negotiation. Uh, and Jared, I mean, just you're going to have to make that determination if that is, but which we can go into executive session. But I just want to make sure that we all understand that and that we're not talking about anything in a public meeting that might be of a confidential nature that relates to contract discussions, negotiations. I appreciate you making that point, Richard. I don't think I, I don't think I shared anything that was I, I shared my own personal feelings. Yeah, you may not have. I just wanted to make yeah. sure that I was out there as we move forward, though. No, I understand, and and I think many people who are listening to what Joe is saying right now probably feel a little deflated as well. Uh, you know, specifically when we we just had this other conversation about uh, internet, and uh, you know what he just he just mentioned um, but yes i'm sorry Jared. yeah so as far as since the new administration took um over in in dc i haven't heard of any new rulings coming out from the fcc or any court cases we also haven't been updated by our council and i know that that's something that they do monitor qu closely so i don't think that there's been time yet for any of that development but it should something come up it's going to be on our radar and we'll make sure that we address it. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? All right, Jared, thank you very much for the update. We really appreciate it. Certainly. It's nice to see you all and I uh, appreciate it. Again, I'm all, my door is also always open email. So if you guys have further questions tonight, tomorrow, weeks down the road, happy to address it. So please let me I actually have a thank question. Thank you, Jared. Jared. Do I see? I saw Joyce, you were waving. No, I had a question for you Jerry. You were saying goodbye? Can't hear you. Yes, yeah, Uwusu. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know that you're doing a great job, by the way? <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I see you. That means All right, a lot. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Have a good okay. night. Okay. Um, we're moving on to 
uh, discussion of Ordinance 46-122-20, technical amendments to the USDO. Um, so uh, a lot more work has been done uh, by Judy and others to look for problems with um, the uh, most current draft. And Brad Glass has compiled all those issues in a document. And um, I don't know how best to uh, proceed. Uh, Brad, do you want to talk about the changes? We, we all received a copy of it today. Uh, yeah, I would just say if there's um, anything that anyone has noted that, that wasn't in there, I tried to list them out by, by page so you could source them. And um, I did have a conversation with uh, Council Member Doshi this afternoon, and she pointed out a couple of things that I had, I had missed. Um, one of them was a rather lengthy table that I reformatted and added in there. Um, so I, I think I covered everything as best as I could, but happy to uh, listen and add to if uh, need be. And I'm ready to send these on to the general code along with the ordinances that you've all adopted over over time to uh, get the changes made and move on to the next steps. Okay, thank you, Brad. Uh, comments, questions by committee members? Judy? Yes, thank you. I do appreciate uh, Brad having uh, put everything that we need to address right now in uh, in the code. Some some uh, in this chart, there are some things, um, many ambiguities and other things that um, were raised by me and Kathy by uh, by you in some of your comments that are really not technical changes, they really do require clarifications and potential change in the meaning uh, of them that um, you know, I've isolated them in, in my memos in the third section. So these, this chart does not include anything in that third um, section of it. Um, and, and the goal is then we will take that, those issues and those further changes up when we're looking at uh, the overall document and substantive changes uh, and clarifications. Um, Mr. Glass, I, I appreciate the um, challenges that you faced in adding in a portion of a chart that had been uh, omitted. Um, and I do want to note that the foot, you added a new footnote on, I think it now shows up on page four. Uh, yeah, and, I believe. And the second footnote really should be a triple I, I believe. Right. So that change should be made before uh, we do anything with it, before you pass it on to general code. Um, also, I note on, on page two, um, there was some language that we discussed that uh, you were struggling with, I've been struggling with, uh, with regard to the contextual um, setbacks. Where is it? See, this is why I don't like, I tried not printing this out. Um, <laughs> I, I feel your pain. <laughs> And so now where is that? So there was there were two provisions. One we agreed, I thought that we couldn't come up with a language and you were just going to take out the changes. I'm sorry. I have this down as being page two, but it's apparently not. I should, I should have just bit the bullet and printed it out. So I, I do know what you're referencing and I think there were uh, a, a number of changes or at least a couple changes. And I think, I thought we had agreed upon the first part but not upon the replacement of adjacent 
structure with nearest yeah. structure. We were going to leave that, but I left the remaining changes because they seem to be still pertinent to clarify. Right. Well, it provides some clarification. It still leaves a big question mark because we haven't addressed that. So I'm I if I just wanted to note that and I'm okay with that. Um and um and and I have had an opportunity to review um everything and compare it to you know the notes in mine. And I note um, for everybody's benefit that our goal is to transmit this to general code along with the, I think it's for um, uh, USDO code changes ordinances that we have passed that amend the USDO, which would include Mr. Howey's and the blood plasma and um, some changes to the blue roof. I, think that this picked up everything in the sign changes. I'm not one. I have, I have six and, and two of them are the uh, green roof, blue, blue, blue roof. There was the initial ordinance and then there was a second. Uh, and then there was a really minor one related to a uh, change to the floodplain map that was referenced. So uh, All right. and the blood plasma, the signs, uh, the waivers, and must be forgetting one here. Signs, the flood map, blood plasma, the two blue green roofs, and then the and then the waivers. That, sure. That's all of them. So, with regard to next steps, um, you're going to be transmitting this to Gen Code along with those to get the corrections. Um, I noted in my conversation with Mr. Glass today that uh, Mr. Conti had recommended that uh, the council not act on passing this until we have back those changes. Um, and I, um, I do think that that is appropriate. I, you know, the question is, do we hold this in committee until we get that back? I kind of feel like it is better my preference is for it to remain in committee, especially since potentially we're gonna get these things back from Gen Code within the next few days, hopefully in time you know, for you to get on the, the, the uh, agenda for uh, the county committee, uh, plan, the county planning board. Anyway, if we get them back shortly, then hopefully we can have a very brief meeting in which We've had an opportunity then to proof that document with the changes in it. I kind of feel like that's our obligation to do as opposed to passing something on to the council. There is also the issue I've raised a couple times now. The cover legislation does not make it clear that we're doing a repeal and a replace. And also the sponsor's memo, I think to the extent that we have made something that is arguably slightly beyond a technical change in terms of a just a grammatical correction, et cetera, where we've actually uh, potentially changed a setback in one location to match in another. There are, <coughs> there are a couple of those that I think that it is appropriate for us to include in the sponsor's memo to note that there are, there are those things. Now that we've backed out some of the changes that were at issue, it's very, that's going to be very few, but I do think that that needs to be taken care of before we actually vote that out. But it do, I don't think that that prevents Mr. Glass from going ahead and going to Gen Code and asking them to make the changes reflected here. Kathy, you're muted. Uh, Brad, is that? correct the timing for um, to get it back from Genco just a few days or I, I have uh, I've communicated with them they're expecting it um, I did not get a commitment um, as to when but I'm going to press them hard because I think a lot of these changes do come back to uh, mistakes that they made um, so you know we'll see I'm going to give them that date and see if they can meet it I'll let you know what I hear um, and we'll go from there and your thoughts about some of Judy's other comments about uh, uh, 
changing the legislation and the sponsor's memo to reflect. I don't really have any opinion. However, the council would like to do it. So. Okay. Can I just- uh, Richard? So, so procedurally, what you, re what you need to do, just following up on Judy, um, the ordinance needs to be amended. Um, so it's actually what I believe we're doing. It would be repealing the existing USDO in its entirety um, and enacting uh, the new USDO, which is what you get back from general code, uh, which we'll have because we don't have a red line version that under our rules can show the additions and strikes and adds. So the only way to do it is to strike the whole, repeal the existing code and reenact it uh, with the revised uh, version that you get from, uh, from general code. Uh, we can't act on it though until we have the final copy. So the council can't vote on something unless it has the final copy back before them. So okay. that's, that's what has to happen. The sponsor's memo, I mean, if this document that uh, Brad did is a summary of the revisions, I mean, that could be incorporated into the sponsor's memo with whatever narrative summary you need to put in there. Okay, is that, um, is um, JR however, still on? However, Richard, there I are- I don't see JR. Oh. We'll have to get that information to JR about uh, updating the sponsor's memo. Yeah, Judy was had to comment on that, maybe. Go ahead, Judy. So this document that that uh, Brad has provided us with, actually now revised, um, um, does not reflect all the changes made in, in the clean copy that arguably would be um, substantive change. There were a couple places where I identified issues um, as it being a arguably substantive change, but I personally, and I think the committee in our discussion last time agreed that those were appropriate changes to be made. So that's why I was, you know, I'm, I'm glad to work on uh, you know the sponsor's memo somebody yeah. needs to revise the okay so maybe this doesn't need to be included but maybe a, you know a, a good sponsor's memo with a narrative lets the public know what's going on okay um, so then it sounds like we're going to uh, meet again as, uh, as soon as we get the uh, revised uh, document back from general code and Judy, you're gonna, you agreed to work on the sponsor's memo, memo to update it? Right. Okay. But we need somebody to make the changes to the legislation. I do uh, want, I think that we have a meeting uh, planned for before our next council meeting. We have, uh, uh, we have a meeting, uh, the next meeting is the 16th and that's right. to, uh, discuss local law M of 2020. That's the demolition, historic resource commission and demolition procedure. So, Shall we see if we can finish it up? Hopefully we'll get it back from general code by then, Brad. That, that'd be great. Anytime we can layer multiple items on a meeting. Um, makes me okay. Happy. And Michelle? <laughs> yes. Could you add then um, to the agenda for the 16th, mm -hmm. this ordinance? Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Huh. It looks like any other comments or questions and before we go ahead, Alfredo. Thank you. Um, one, one, once again, I want to thank Judy um, because, you know, between the original 14 page and the additional six page uh, document, um, you know, I appreciate that. And I know how much time in, that took. Um, and I went through yours and I found one that I had that wasn't on here. I felt kind of like I got one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes, I, Judy, thank on behalf of everyone on the committee, thank you for all the work that you've put into this. I mean, 
countless hours. We know anyone who has has jumped into this document knows how much time it took. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. And JR, uh, you, I don't know if you heard any of the conversation. But Kathy, but Kathy. Go ahead. Alfredo was just saying he has found something else that maybe should be in. Oh, did did you send it to Brad? No, I Alfredo? didn't. I didn't get up to ah. it. No, it's it's and it's it's on page <laughs> three seventy five. 477. Um, and it's a situation where you change the word and to an all on uh, what article? Uh, so it's the fourth chapter. Oh, 77. I have it on page 77. Of the clean copy, right? I'm 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 still using the wet line copy. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea what the clean. Copy I couldn't is. go back and start all over with this. I just, I'll start all over with the with the new version. I'm still in the wet line copy, and it's uh, forgive my dog. It's, but you you tell us a section citation since we're. I'm working off the clean copy, so my page number will be different. Uh, three seven five dash four zero six. It's so it's Article Four. I have it as yes, Article Four. I have it as page seventy seven. I have as A. It starts with. A land, landscape buffer shall be provided. And then it has uh, one, two, three, five, I don't know, sections in that, in that. I don't know what you would call that, five letters or I's. Um, and it just section, the section three, and it uh, simply just changes an, uh, an and to an all. So I just wanted to get clarification on that. So I'm, I see, oh, am I muted? Oh no, I, I see two ors. Is it, is it in the first, uh, the first sentence there or towards the last sentence? What sentence are you looking at? Uh, we're a lot in a mixed use. So I'm looking over here. Can you see that? That doesn't help, does it? It, it kind of does. I, I, I'm, I'm right where you are. I'm just not sure which or you're, you're pointing what at. That is, where a Latin mixed used and is crossed out and is replaced with all special, special purpose zoning district. All right. I mean, I, I think, I think or would be the proper usage there. Maybe it was and, and they changed it to or. It was and, ah, maybe I should go to this. Here we go. So it's found on page 209 in the actual, um, war. Right. On the oh, 210, I apologize. How my sticky note is. 210. Um, on the, uh, I don't know if it's called section five, but side and wheel lat line buffers. So it's the third eye. And in here it says and. Oh, 
I see or in mine. Oh no, I see what you're talking. Number three, okay. got it. Where mixed juice and it should say or. I think that I think or is the proper meaning there because you know it's in it's in one district. Each each property is only in one district, so it'd be one district or the other, mixed juice or a special purpose district. Okay, as long as there's a reason for that, sounds good to me. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Any yeah. other comments before we adjourn? And uh, we'll reconvene again. Yes. Go I ahead, have, JR. Yes. Just wanted to make sure. So we're getting, so the, the with all the, the repeal and replace version with the renumbering, that's going to be finalized at the February 16th meeting. I just wanted to be clear. Yes. And, and oh. uh, we're, I believe we're going to ask you to update the legislation. You mean in terms of the in terms of the sponsors memo? Judy has indicated she'll work on the sponsors memo, but there need to be it has to re be reflected in the legislation as well. Oh, because it's the attachment. I can yeah I can yeah I forgot it's an attachment so I can do that. The other thing is I wanted to point out is that if we're going to have this done on February sixteenth meeting. This is not going to get onto the county planning board's agenda until March then, because February 8th is the deadline to submit it for the oh. February meeting. Can't, can't we sub, submit it on the 8th if we have it on the 8th? If it's done on the 8th, if we have it all done on the 8th, yeah, but we can't, we have to, it has to be prepared, it has to be in its final form. So if there's any amendments made on the February 16th, that then the copy gets striked. Are we anticipating amendments on the 16th? Brad, I think any only, amendments only you might if have. the code doesn't pick up everything that you're asking to be picked up. So, yep. uh, you know, I as soon as they get it, if I, you know, I'd be glad to, you know, take a look at it and look to see if they have made all the changes where they need to make all the changes. But I'm not sure that that makes much difference unless right, they give yeah we'll just we'll just shoot for the march uh, you know that's okay fine. yeah i just wanted to know i mean if could he give it to the county board and could we go a second time if there was a major problem this way if there is no problem he's done i mean that's what i would try to do but i don't know if there's a problem doing it twice to the county jr jr He's gone. <laughs> oh no, he's there, there. Jared. Sorry about that. I'm like running late. Um, what was the last question? I'm sorry. If we just went, if he went, if Brad went forward with the county and they look at it and then we look at it when we, we finally get it on the 16th and there's no problem, we're all set. But on the 16th, if we see something needs to change, could we go back to the county in March and say, look, we found this and we need to adjust it? Or is it just a one shot deal with the county? No, we can always go back. I just, the thing is, it's it's just, I don't, the county, they their planner has to review it too. And I just don't want, they only have one staff member at the plant, at the county. So they, they highly advise that you give us, they give you, give them the final shot, the final product. If, if it's like a technical change or something like that, is does that have to go back to the board? General Municipal Law it, it says that there's changes that affect, it just, it's very, the laws, the General Municipal Law is very specific saying that if it's, you know, redo, that you have to send it back. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, I, you know, I got a question whether if it's, you know, if you change, for example, an and to an or, and it has no- I don't no think those would be, but anything more substantial than an and or an or, I think that that's where it becomes problematic. I think any changes we might have are gonna be more like a technical correction or whatever, nothing substantive. Yeah. Assuming that what we get back is uh, reflects what we've talked about. Well, when, so when does the county board meet, uh, JR? Once a month, and it's usually the middle of the month. So, okay, I'm just trying to think it out. Sounds like yeah, they, we have they require it to be submitted two weeks prior, like a minimum two weeks prior to their meeting. 
Okay, but I'm so thinking, could we cancel it? Like, say we find a problem they haven't met yet. Can we just tell them hold off? You know, I can always time. supplement it. It's never been a it's never been an issue for me to supplement it. But um, it's just that what, before for us to receive a decision from them, you want to have the decision on the final form. All right. Sounds like we have a, a plan, uh, Brad. You'll share that once General Cole gets back to you. You'll share that with us. We'll review it, and uh, and then make a decision as to what we do next. And in the meantime, we'll meet again. Uh, plan to meet again on February sixteenth. Okay. Okay. All right. Any anything else before we adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Judy, second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good night, everybody.